Starting, all attendees are in listen-only mode. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the Wednesday webinar. Uh, I'm Dixie Zitlow, and I'm uh, happy to be here today and talk with you about how we can all work uh, toward empowering disconnected youth using protective factors um, that we can find through healthy relationship education. Uh, before we get into the webinar itself, um, just want to go over a couple of housekeeping um, components. Uh, if, you, if you're unable to access the audio through your computer, you can call in through your phone. The phone number is there and the access code is on your screen. Um, all attendees are muted, so if you have a question or a concern, please go to your chat box or your question box. Um, actually your chat box over in your panel and uh, right in there. Um, you're also going to have some poll questions today, so that'll come up on the screen so we have a little interaction here. Um, and I'll be looking for your input as well, so you'll be typing into your chat box for that. Uh, I'd like to introduce you to Kathy Guidry. Kathy? Hi, Dixie. Hi, everyone. It's good to be here with you. And Kathy will help you out with uh, any technical issues that you might have, and also we'll be following the questions and the comments that come through. Um, and so we'll be talking with her probably later. Um, so let's get started here. Um, many of you probably already know who Charlie and Helen Dibble are. And for those of you who don't, just let me give you a little synopsis of the background. Uh, a lot of times people say, well, where does that name come from? Um, well, Charlie and Helen, actually, their last name is where the Dibble Institute got its name. And Charlie was an aeronautical engineer, and in his retirement years, he really dedicated himself and his work to working with young people. Um, in doing so, he became well aware of the emotional challenges that they that they had and um, and what was in store for them in their future. This became most evident in the late 80s when he was at a grandniece's wedding and he heard her say, oh, Uncle Charlie, this is just my first wedding. Now, when I say this in a room, usually there's this huge gasp, so I'm imagining you gasping, maybe. Um, but this was also at a time in history when the divorce rate was beginning to reach its peak. And so this proclamation by his great niece was um, a little astonishing. And he was concerned about her future, but also the future of other young people. Uh, he had heard enough uh, stories of pain and bewilderment from youth around him that um, he decided to get involved. And to make a long story short, Charlie quickly realized that little was being done to address the needs of these young people when it came to forming healthy relationships. So he started a corporation with some fellow business colleagues and friends and founded the Dibble Fund, which is now known as the Dibble Institute. And the Dibble Institute, people ask who we are, uh, what do we believe? So let me give you a little background on that. The Dibble Institute is a national and international organization, and we publish healthy relationship educational materials. We also are a resource for research, and you can find a lot of this information on our websites, on our website, and also in our monthly newsletter. And this is also where you find out about webinars and other topics, grant information. And we're very happy um, to be able to share these things with you. The Dibble Institute believes in research. This is really important to us. And we believe that this research is then used to equip young people with the skills and the knowledge to lead to healthy romantic lives. We do this by translating that re research into evidence-based teaching tools that are used throughout the country and, as I said, even internationally. Since 2006, close to 2 million young people have been reached by uh, people that are using the Dibble programs. 
Um, besides publishing curriculum, we are uh, a resource for research, as I said. And another thing that the Dibble Institute believes in very strongly is stable and healthy families. We are pro-marriage and we are also pro-stable relationships. And we know in this day and age, strong committed relationships, healthy relationships is key uh, to everyone's lives, especially to young people. We believe that violence to any member of a family in any gender is unacceptable. Um, we are not against divorce. Um, people always ask us that. And we are also um, believe that single parents are heroes, that they spend a great deal of time uh, serving the needs of their children and acting as two parents, um, which can be very difficult. We know that it's hard sometimes to engage a non-custodial parent, um, and, but if, if, it, if that is a safe relationship, it is really worth doing. We also believe that all people deserve respect, to be treated with respect, and that all have a right to healthy relationships. We believe that relationships of all kinds can be strengthened and enhanced with relationship skills um, education. And this means that we've written our materials not to assume the gender of a young person's partner. We also have included in our materials diverse scenarios and role plays so that everyone that you are teaching and interacting with feels included. This means that you can feel confident that whoever is in your class or your workshop, that they will be treated with respect and learn the skills that will enhance their relationships. So let's look at what the goals are for today. We're going to identify the risk factors that disconnected youth experience, and then what some of the protective factors are that healthy relationship education offers to disconnected and homeless youth. We also want to learn how healthy relationship education is a protective factor and that, that addresses their needs and how it teaches social and emotional well-being for youth. And lastly, I want to be able to share with you how evidence-based curriculum like Love Notes provides the skills that they need and how that is reported from others who work with at-risk youth in a variety of venues. So disconnected youth experience many risk factors and healthy relationship education offers protective factors for these disconnected youth. Now for purposes of this webinar, let me just briefly say that here we're, when we're talking about disconnected youth, we are including, but um, this may be broader than how I'm defining this, to homeless youth, uh, youth that live in, in poverty, that have social disparities, maybe foster youth. Um, it is youth who are living in a high risk type situation. And let's look at what some of those risk factors that um, disconnected youth experience. Kathy, would you put up that first poll question, please? Um, before I share with you my thoughts, um, and what we know, I'm looking for your input here. So which of the following risk factors are risk factors for disconnected youth? Which of those do you believe? You click on that, and Kathy's going to put up the results as they come up. Can we give you a few more seconds to answer? There you go, Dixie. You've got a smart crowd here today. I have an extremely smart crowd here today. <laughs> yes, all the above, each and every one of those. And we're going to address each of those as we go through this. And I know that these very smart people, um, they also, oh, let me find where my screen was here. They also um, know of some other um, risk factors that disconnected youth. So I'd like you all to go to your chat box. Again, that's found in your control panel on the side 
and I'd like you to type in some other risk factors that you believe and have seen and experienced that disconnected youth experience. Would you do that, please? Go to your chat box in your control panel. And Kathy, whatever comes up in there. Okay. We've got gangs, negative school experiences, bullying, past childhood trauma, lack of healthy mentors, substance abuse and use, um, poor school attendance, homelessness. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I'm sure the list goes on and on and on. Um, these are serious things. It, it feels very much um, like they are behind the eight ball. Mm -hmm. um, and and it makes life difficult. And it makes life difficult also in the sense of um, how do I move forward in my life? So let's look at that first one that was on there, the risky sexual behaviors and pregnancy and what that's all about. So some research and information behind that is we know that this is a big, um, very big uh, risk factor for young people. And this is not about shaming them and saying, oh, just stop doing that. This is about them being informed and learning, as we're going to talk about later, how to make some choices that help them to get to where they want to go and change their environment and their future. We know that survival sex amongst disconnected youth is a real concern, along with sexual exploitation. And both of these things lead to a greater possibility of pregnancy, HIV, AIDS, and um, all different types of STIs. One third of unaccompanied female youth have been pregnant. And 50% of those unaccompanied youth have had some kind of pregnancy, pregnancy experience. Now, whether they become pregnant while experiencing homelessness, or they become homelessness because they're pregnant or parents, um, they will find themselves probably without a safe place to live. Now that just made their, their situation more difficult. And then also without access to opportunities and supports. Um, housing and support is a really big concern for um, at-risk youth. Um, secondly, domestic violence is another risk factor that disconnected youth experience. Um, this may have started at home, but if they are on the streets or uh, unaccompanied, as we like to call it, um, and if they're in a survival mode, these young people will find themselves more likely to be in situations where domestic violence can occur. And why does this happen? I, I, I've heard adults especially say this. Um, is One example of, of why this happens is that when they're in this mode and uh, living this at-risk um, life, they may find themselves partnering up with someone who can provide shelter for them. And that person might be um, abusive. And all of this also leads to um, faulty relationship beliefs. And this is a risk factor for them. So what, what do we mean by faulty relationship beliefs? Um, in thinking about the young people you work with, does this sound familiar? I am not worthy of a safe and healthy relationship. Or maybe you've heard, I've never experienced or seen a healthy relationship. Or you might have heard, this is my norm. Isn't everyone's family like this? So a faulty relationship belief impacts youth because this is how they view themselves with little to no hope, no change for their future. This is their norm. How could it be any other way? Where do these ideas come from? Sometimes they come from the family, sometimes from the system that they find themselves in. The media can reinforce this. And there's a lot of low self-esteem, so they start to believe for themselves that they don't deserve any more than this. Now, 
there is some good news. And that good news is that there are some protective factors that can address and even change some of these behaviors for disconnected youth. So what are those protective factors that can counter this? And I have a couple of questions before we get into that. A couple of questions for you. Kathy, would you put up the second um, poll question, please? Sure. So are social and emotional well-being um, attitudes and beliefs, are those protective factors for disconnected youth? Is social and emotional well-being a protective factor? Okay. And 97% said yes, absolutely correct. Thank you. And Kathy, would you put up the, the last poll question, please? Sure. So what skills in healthy relationship education do you think are protective factors for disconnected youth? You've got three here, and I'm sure there's more, and I'm going to ask you about that in a second. Do you think these are protective factors for these disconnected youth? Okay. Absolutely. The one percent that said relationship efficacy, yes, and yes, I'm building connections with peer with others, peers, adults, but yes to all the above. Um, and no one put the impulse control, but I'm obviously for the 92 percent. We're 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 looking at that also. Again, I'd like you to go to your chat box. Now I want you to put your thinking caps on what um, protective factors do you know of that you think healthy relationship education might offer to these, to these um, at-risk and disconnected youth? Thinking about healthy relationship, what protective factors do you think might come from there that would help counter these risk factors? Kathy, what do you have coming in in the chat box. Okay, and actually, <clears throat> I'm sorry, Dixie. Um, mm -hmm. They're welcome to put them in the question box is where everyone, oh, okay. I guess, typically used to putting them so, because um, someone was asking about the chat box. Okay, oh, okay. so um, high self-esteem, safe sex, again, self-esteem, negotiation and refusal skills, Mm -hmm. I love and I love the piece um Jane that wrote supportive adult because we know um all of our lessons always have a supportive adult piece. Absolutely. Um, self confidence, spiritual values, assertive communication skills, anger management and communication techniques, social support, positive influences from friends, self respect, knowledge of healthy and unhealthy relationships, higher education. <clears throat> Excuse mm -hmm. me. Healthy interest in multiple activities, love, person to talk to, positive family connections. Boy, we've got a group that knows what they're doing out there in the field. Um, mm -hmm. Good role models for uh, for boys and for girls. Positive support, um, adult again, community support. Goes on and on, on and on. Well, thank you very much, and thank you, Kathy, for reading those. So let's look at the three that I offered in the, that we offered there in the poll. And again, keeping in mind all the other um, answers that you put in, um, in your responses as well. The first thing I want to talk about here is the impulse control. Um, so, I've had somebody ask me this, so that's why I'm clarifying. So what is impulse control? Now, chances are good, most of you know this, but it's being able how to control how I act and how I think or I respond to a situation. Being able to control my emotions and my actions. Um, if you work with at-risk youth, then you know that the lack thereof looks like a lot of drama. Um, fighting, poor decision making, a disregard for considering risks and consequences, and sometimes even a lack of considering other people, a lack of empathy. 
Now, healthy relationship education teaches skills that can bring awareness to a lot of this and then also gives them an opportunity to put this into practice uh, in their lives. So what skills help build impulse control? Um, and I heard some of that in what you wrote in. Um, learning to, first of all, identify the risks and consequences of our actions and sometimes even our beliefs. Um, learning how to decide being a little more deliberate versus sliding into a situation. Understanding how my brain works um, through understanding some brain science and then I'm more likely to know um, what choices I have and that I can and do have some co control over my brain. And that is going to include things like anger management and communication skills. Um, young people, we have found love learning about their brains. It gives them an insight into, oh, so that's what's going on. There's, I'm not broken. It's I'm still developing instead, and I can uh, become an active part of that development. Um, learning how to do a uh, brainstorming model, how to plan for other alternatives, um, is very much a skill that they learn through healthy relationship education. And, um, and then lastly here, learning to identify what their baggage is. We all have baggage. Um, and through our programs, we learn the difference between good and bad baggage, um, how some baggage can change into good baggage, and then uh, learning from our past uh, not only what it is, but what I can keep and what I can change. Another protective factor, and I heard this again and again in your comments, was uh, building healthy connections with others. Now that could be peers, adults, and definitely romantic partners. Um, and why is this uh, such an important protective factor? Well, basically, connection, human connection, is one of our primal needs. We all want to connect. And that can mean, whether it's good or bad, we still need that connection. So healthy relationship education can teach the difference between what healthy and unhealthy looks like. Um, how do I know, if I've never seen it before, if something is conditional or unconditional? Am I being loved that way? Or is this relationship controlling or not? Is this relationship about something particular like sex or money and something somebody wants from me as opposed to a healthy, balanced relationship about a variety of topics? And other um, important connections are, again, through mentors. I heard that. As Kathy alluded to in uh, Love Notes in particular, we have uh, an activity at, at in each lesson called the Trusted Adult Connection, where youth get to share what they learn and get another perspective from a trusted adult, building mentor type relationships and establish a healthy relationship with an adult. This may be something they've not had before or something that they even welcomed before. Um, these healthy relationship um, skills are needed. And another thing that is learned here also is communication skills through doing this. And then also social and emotional well-being comes along with that. Let's see if I can flip my slide here. Uh, healthy relationship education empowers uh, young people also to have relationship efficacy. And that is a protective factor because it changes the way they see themselves and what um, they deserve and what they can have. They learn how to choose some relationships and which ones maybe to let go of. Now, I want to show you a slide here and, and tell you a little bit about a demonstration we do in Love Notes um, and the effectiveness of it. So these are red and green marbles. Um, and sometimes we use beads, of course. 
we have two bags of beads when we do this demonstration. One has more red than green in it. And one has more green than red. We ask for a volunteer to uh, reach their hand in the dominantly red green bag and pull out a bead. Now we ask this question then, what are the chances that a person would pull out a green bead? Now the chances are not impossible obviously, but rather slim. We also talk about what these red and green beads represent. So green represents positive, positive relationships, possibly choices, circumstances, situations. And the red is negative, negative relationships, choices, circumstances, and situations. We have the young people identify what some of those would be, what some of those positives would be, and what some of those negatives would be. And then we ask them, if you could change that bag of beads so that you could get more green, what would you do? And 99% of the time, the young people answer first, look at the bag. If I'm looking away when I reach in the bag, um, it's going to be less likely that I'm going to get a green. But when I look at the bag, I can see what I'm grabbing for, what I'm picking up. They also a lot of times ask them, well, can I take some of the red out? The answer, of course, is yes. What does that mean and how would you do that? Can I add green? Yes, you can. What would that mean and how would you do that? And we ask them, how long does it take some does it take to take some of the red out of the bag or to add the green? And what is the first step to doing that? We are empowering them in relationship efficacy, giving them a demonstration of of the control that they have in their life to start making some changes. Remember, we're talking about disconnected youth who may not feel very empowered in their life at all. Healthy relationship education really provides these um, protective factors that we've just talked about and many others and, they, and helps to diminish the risk factors um, that they experience and meets their needs in a really holistic way. Holistic is really means here um, meeting them where they are and what they are, with what they are interested in, healthy relationships. You can talk to young people about all kinds of things, but they always wanna talk about their relationships. And it meets them um, for these healthy relationships and it impacts them, their future, their school, their job, parenthood, society. It meets them on so many levels here. Protective factors really do increase with healthy relationship education. And it helps teens and young adults who have experienced childhood adversity or ACEs. It helps them um, make sense and meaning of their past. It teaches them to look for the patterns that they experienced and to better understand how their earlier experiences can um, have influenced their lives and their choices. And not in a shaming way, but in a very empowering way. Most importantly, it supports youth in defining the patterns that they want in a relationship, um, both their present relationships and their future for their future family and their life goals. But defining isn't just enough. Relationship education also equips them with knowledge and the skills to build self-efficacy to move towards those skills. And the prevention of ACEs or adverse childhood experiences is not only important to them, but it will also be important to their children um, now and also in the future. So healthy relationship education teaches social and emotional well-being also um, as a result of learning this, I would say. Um, learning who I am as a youth, um, that I have a voice and that my voice has value, that everyone is looking to connect 
and that they everyone wants a healthy relationship. Um, these social and emotional well-being, uh, or this social and emotional well-being, is learned through some of the skills that are learned. Some of these we've already mentioned, but they're worth mentioning again. Uh, learning what is healthy and safe, and what is not. Uh, having hope that I can have a healthy relationship. Learning even what my personality type is so that I can interact and understand other people um, better. Learning how to set boundaries, learning how to negotiate situations and exit situations that I need to. Um, learning how to set realistic expectations. And we're going to look at that here a little bit more. And learning how to have uh, skills to communicate better and make better choices. So um, in this example that we have right here, we use this when we talk about what it is to have expectations and where they come from, um, what influences our expectation, and when do our expectations go wrong. And so I just wanted to sh share this with you very quickly and, and say that our expectations um, can get us into trouble sometimes or can have a negative impact on our lives when we're not aware of them, when we don't know how to communicate them, when we don't know how to problem solve differences, and uh, when we don't know how to meet other people's needs or compromise. But the opposite is true. Be aware of your expectations, have reasonable expectations, learn how to communicate them, and be willing to compromise in a healthy, and safe way. Um, social and emotional well-being is also learned through communication skills and conflict resolution skills. And I want to share a little example of this with you. Um, there is a basic center in Texas uh, where a young woman was brought into the center. She and her mom had reached a point in their relationship where the fighting had um, become physical. And there was yelling, shouting, a lot of very negative, not positive, even dangerous um, situations there. And so through the intake, they took um, this young, th this basic center took this young woman um, through the first three lessons of uh, Relationship Smarts Plus, and then, um, and then took her through the communication and conflict resolution lessons. And after this was completed, they brought her mom into the center and the young woman worked with her mom in learning the skills and learning how to communicate with each other. And the, the really exciting part of that is that this was a growth for this young woman in order to learn that there was another way of dealing with um, issues that she was having. But it also taught her mom that and they were able to uh, be able to be re reunited again in their home. And this was really, um, really wonderful. Another thing that is learned in healthy relationship education is what happens again in the brain. When we have an angry brain, we teach them this, but then we also teach them how to take a time out and um, the importance of learning how to deal with that um, in a positive way. So what are they um, doing about their love lives? When we talk about all these skills that are learned here, we know that love lives are really important. And when youth have learned social and emotional well-being um, skills and, and they are social, socially and emotionally well, means that they're more likely to choose healthier and safer relationships because they believe that they can have one and they know what that might look like. They also learn how this impacts other parts of their lives. Um, now, before we go into this last part, uh, do we have any questions, Kathy, that anyone has asked? 
Yes, actually, <clears throat> excuse me, one has just popped up from Beth. Um, she would like to know, is there a component of the program that speaks to early recognition of perpetrator behaviors and how to respond to them as adults? That is a tough question. Um, I would not say there's a component of this uh, healthy relationship program, Love Notes, that identifies that. But I will say that if that is identified, that as we go through, as you would go through the lessons with them, um, you are teaching them to deal with what has happened in a very trauma informed way and the fact that they can move forward from that. Um, so I, I hope that that makes sense. If it doesn't, please um, type some more in. And also, um, I can address that with you on, it, through an email or a phone call if you would like. Right. And um, you m I might want to mention to um, Car Carol, one of our other staff people are on, and she said uh, to mention that the red flags, the, the activity with the red flags, if you want to mention that, Dixie, helps to mm -hmm. identify, uh, helps you to identify uh, perpetrators or perpetrating type um, actions. Oh, I see what you're saying. I was thinking about this in a different way. Um, yes, um, both in an earlier lesson where we talk about baggage, when we talk about what is safe and unsafe through the, uh, there's a, a game actually that we play called Red Flags, where the young people are asked to identify what is safe and unsafe in relationships. And through some of the different activities throughout, uh, in particular Love Notes, but also Relationship Smarts Plus, they are learning um, to identify what that is. I thought you were saying, uh, is there a, is there like a an intake tool where you would identify right, that? Right. And also mm -hmm. some of the information um, in Love Notes on domestic violence. Mm -hmm. There is. But I um, would identify a lot of that too, probably. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I would say that every lesson gives an opportunity to uh, identify where a person is and um, and then they also learn skills and like I said before be, are able to practice putting those skills uh, to good use to identify I'm not taking this forward this is where I was this mm -hmm. is where I learned that but this is how I'm going to move forward mm -hmm. in, a, in a very positive way um, taught this and I can say that young people love it because it is so um, activity driven, um, the materials that we're talking about, and, and they get to self identify these things as opposed to somebody telling them. Right. And um, I might mention to Beth and anyone else who is interested at the end, there's a survey and there's a spot you can actually request um, from us a digital review copy of any of our curriculum. Um, so if you would just say that you want a digital review copy of Love Notes or Relationship Smarts Plus or whatever it may be, then I'll be in touch with you about that. And that Absolutely. will give you uh, more of an insight. And Johnny um, is asking about is the program or any, well, are any of our programs offered in Spanish or does the curriculum come in Spanish? And um, you want to answer you that? Can you go right ahead, Kathy. Okay. Well, Johnny, we do have uh, Spanish work, uh, the workbooks that, and the student journals that go along with the love notes that we have in Spanish. Um, right now, we do not offer any of the, the teacher's curriculum in Spanish, just the student component of the workbooks. Um, but if you'd like to speak further to me about that, just make a little note and I'll, I'll call you or email you after the um, this week after the webinar. We talk a little mm -hmm. bit more about that. There's so many different dialects of the Hispanic language that um, translate sometimes does become a little difficult in order to meet, to actually reach a, a large range of students or young people. Mm -hmm. Yes, good point. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Well, let's move on and we answer some more questions at the very end. So, you know, please feel free to continue writing those in and we're happy to address those. Um, I wanna share with you today some evidence-based materials that we have found really make a difference 
in young people's life and help them to gain those protective factors um, and let go of some of their the risk uh, risky behaviors and and deal with some of the risk factors that that they encounter. So five years ago, or actually now a little bit more, some research was done at the University of Louisville. This was a five-year study, and it was funded by the Office of Adolescent Health. And the study served 14 to 16-year-olds, uh, and the outcome really um, included information on pregnancy prevention, domestic violence, what healthy relationships are, uh, communication and conflict resolution. Now, um, this is where I direct you also back to our website. And if you look under programs and love notes, you will see that you can um, uh, read the research that came from there um, and get a lot more information about that study in particular. Um, this love notes uh, curriculum is a 13 uh, modular curriculum, and it was designed really to educate youth about healthy relationships. And that included issues about planning and decision making, communication, and conflict resolution. And it, it, it is aimed to reduce teen dating violence and unprotected sex, um, and then uh, possibly also uh, sexually transmitted infections and injury. Um, that are there. Evidence, these evidence-based uh, materials provide uh, assurance to any agency that is using them that they're providing quality um, knowledge and skills through the materials to the young people that they're working with. They've already gone through rigorous evaluation for effectiveness. They've been proven to work with a very wide variety of audiences, and I'm going to share some of that with you in a moment. And then it also saves an organization development time. Um, the core elements and their usage have already been packaged for implementation and, and have been found um, very engaging and very successful. Um, Excuse me, Dixie. Just um, it will probably be helpful. What I will uh, be sure to do is have the issue brief for the research. I will make sure that it is uploaded in a PDF form beside the recording of this webinar so that mm -hmm. anyone that wants to or that is looking at the webinar again, you can automatically go and download that issue brief. If you okay, want. great. Great. Thank you very much, Kathy. So healthy relationship education has been taught in a variety of venues across the country and um, I would like to share with you some examples of where people are meeting young people uh, right where they are. An example of that is the University of Utah Healthcare. Now, um, these very smart people have been using love notes um, in summer program with male only juvenile, ju juvenile justice centers. Um, they're serving 14 to 19 year old males and in it, within those three centers one of those three centers is male sex offenders um, that's the one entire center and the outcome so far over the last three years in using love notes um, they've gathered information from pre and post tests and from that, they say that the tests have demonstrated an improvement in communication and conflict resolution skills, an ability to identify what healthy and safe relationships are, um, how to implement effective goal setting skills for education and relationships. And they were very, uh, this last thing they found very important is that the participants really learned how to share what they were learning. So it wasn't that they were just taking information as they were able to share and discuss what that was. If you'd like to learn more about what they're doing um, through the University of Utah Healthcare, you can go again on our website under case studies and uh, look them up and read their, read their case study there. And then, um, Love Notes is also being used um, 
as a preventative and awareness tool for domestic and dating violence at women in need in Texas, um, in Dallas, Texas. And they're using this with teens and young adults in a domestic violence shelter. In schools, they have uh, after school groups and symposiums and in a transitional living program with the residents there. We know that Diaspora in Brooklyn, New York has used it for domestic violence awareness um, through those, their centers. And uh, we know that Family Resources in Florida is using it in a variety of ways. Um, they are in um, the majority of schools in two counties, so they're using it in classrooms. They're also using it at a transitional living um, facility where they serve in this particular facility, uh, LBG, LBGTQ um, community and youth. Their focus really in, uh, at this center is life skills and uh, vo vocational skills. And they see that uh, Love Notes helps to um, build the young person so that they're more engaged there. We know that the uh, Wichita Children's Home is using it in classrooms in, in Kansas. And we know that it's being used in so many, as I said at the very beginning, in so many different places through the US. Teachers, um, social workers, case workers, therapists, um, and the list goes on and on. Uh, we find this a very relevant and adaptable program, and again, an evidence-based program. So from today, what do we know? We know that healthy relationship education really meets uh, young people where they are, um, and it meets the needs of disconnected youth in a really holistic way. We know that Many disconnected youth uh, deal with hunger and safety and shelter as their immediate needs. And we know that some of the risk factors for the at-risk and disconnected youth that we talked about before, risky sexual behaviors and pregnancy, violence, and faulty um, relationship beliefs can be addressed with healthy relationship education, teaching them a real variety of skills that they can put into practice. Before we leave today, I want to thank everyone who works in the field um, for their heroic work and doing the work you do to provide services and educational education for, for the young people um, and, and giving of your time and your energy that makes a difference in their lives. Um, Kathy, do we have any other questions we need to address today? Well, if I'm going to give everyone a few minutes, if you don't mind, to, to put some questions in. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Hold on. I may have an And uh, just go ahead and type them in the question box. Um, okay. Uh, there's a question here, and, and actually I'd love to have a conversation. Dixie probably would, too. Um, Shiska, I believe that's your name, Ms. Johnson. The question is, if you could choose just one curriculum to use with youth, would you recommend Relationships uh, Smarts Plus or Love Notes? And I would ask, first of all, to describe the young people that you're working with. What are their ages? What are their needs? What is the uh, venue that you're working with? How often do you have them? All of those types of things. Um, Relationship Smarts Plus was created for 13 to 18 year olds and um, Love Notes was created for 16 to 24 year olds. Now as you see through the research that we shared, Love Notes was um, used in the five year study for four, with 14 to 16 year olds so we know that it also can work with, with younger people. Um, we say that Love Notes is the edgier sister of Relationship Smarts Plus. So again, it, it's going to depend upon um, the needs of your audience and their ages. Yes, and I'll, I'll be glad to contact you regarding that when you have a short conversation just to kind of find out more about uh, your settings and, and the population that you serve. Uh, Pamela would like to know, is there a cost for Love Notes? 
Yes, there is. And Kathy, would you like to share that with her? <laughs> yes, for sure. Of course, this is an evidence-based program on the Office of Adolescent Health. Um, the EBP model is on the um, Office of Adolescent Health evidence-based list. We have Love Notes 2.1 version, which is $399 for the curriculum. And of course, uh, there are supplemental materials that go with that. And, and Pamela, I can um, also reach out to you and talk with you more about this. There's also the um, Love Notes that is uh, that was actually used by uh, Dr. Barbie. She actually had a certain amount of hours that she could actually facilitate this program. So she pulled out the most important um, activities that she needed to use. And what we have is we have Love Notes 2.1, and then we have the evidence-based model binder that goes along with that. And that is, um, that is cost more than the regular Love Notes. So yeah, you can find all that on our website, but I also will definitely reach out to you to talk with you more about that. Are there any other questions? Let me scroll down here. I'm sorry, I got so involved in answering. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so what are the learning needs of a population? Um, okay, she this uh, Beth says that there are issues of diversity and inclusion that need to be looked at and addressed. And and do you want to talk with how our curriculum? addresses the diversity and inclusion issues. Exactly. Yeah, and of course, diversity can mean a variety of things. Are we talking um, ethnicity? Are we talking gender diversity? What are we talking about here? So when it comes to diversity, and uh, I'll just use Love Notes as the example here, um, we believe that uh, Love Notes is very adaptable, uh, of course, culturally when we're talking about ethnic ethnic how come i can't say it ethnicity and um we also uh it's very important to us that uh gender diversity is uh is addressed and that is done in in all of our language and um, examples given that we never assume the gender of the person's partner so there's no uh, his girlfriend or her boyfriend, mm -hmm. um, it's, it's boyfriend or girlfriend. And then when it comes to uh, the activities, again, you'll find in the scenarios and, um, and the activities that there are examples of, uh, if we're talking about uh, general um, gender diversity, examples of all different types of relationships. So we are very aware of that, and that is important that Again, everyone feels included and sees themselves. Um, and if you want to, again, talk about that more or see examples of that, we can make sure you can review a digital copy or you can get a hold of Kathy or I and we, we can talk about that more. Mm -hmm. And I think the, the last question is, um, <clears throat> Frederica has found that working with youth coming from other countries, there's definitely a disconnect in delivering mm -hmm. information. Um, how does Love Notes address the disconnect with uh, different cultures? Well, um, this is really a question also of training. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm one of uh, Dibble's master trainers. And um, so that means when you're trained in the program, this is something that is addressed. It isn't so much in the uh, language of the curriculum itself but more like if I'm addressing um, family values, finding out who's in the audience, knowing my audience, and um, meeting them where they are. Um, I have heard this again and again that the refugee population, especially with disconnected youth, is growing, and that um, people uh, that are working with them, caseworkers and such that are working with them, uh, want to make sure that they're addressing relationship issues in such a way that they can connect. Mm -hmm. So this comes through our training. Uh, when we train you in a program, which isn't required, of course, but uh, when you're trained in that, that we make sure that you are comfortable in delivering the materials in a way that, um, that these young people will connect with. All righty. 
think those are all the questions, but just, um, just we might want to uh, remind them too, or let them know about the recognition that Love Notes has just gotten. Um, it was, do you want to say this, Dixie? Well, go, go ahead. Okay. Um, the exciting news is that Love Notes was just named as a finalist for the best learning resources from the Association of America, Pub, American Publishers. So we're real excited. That's like the sixth award that Love Notes has um, received. So anyway, uh, just that to give you that exciting. information. Yes. Thank you, Kathy. We're very excited about that. Um, there are other case studies also on our website, so um, p please feel free to go and look through any of those. Um, the webinar uh, will be available on our website within three days. Um, again, you can contact uh, either Kathy or I with any further questions or um, you know, discuss any of this with you. Um, and we want to let you know about the webinar in May. Kathy, would you like to talk to that a little bit? I am very excited about this webinar. Um, we're going to be talking with two people from two different organizations. The first person, or the two people we're going to be talking with is Amanda Sirusian. She is the program director with Child Builders, which is an organization that is in Northeast the city of, of Houston, but in the Northeast area, where it's very um, high risk population of youth, very low income. Um, so I'm really excited to be able to talk with her and Angela Edwards, who is with Pro Unitas. They are two organizations that have, have a collaboration that helps them to be able to get relationship education into the communities and into the schools of Northeast Houston one of the hardest areas um, of Houston to actually reach the youth in a very holistic approach and relationship education being one piece of what they do. So I will be getting that. I'll probably be putting that registration out next week. We'll wait till after the um, long holiday and I'll get that out to y'all. But yes, um, I'm looking forward to that. Okay, great. Um, thank you again all for being here today. Thank you, Kathy. Um, and we look forward to seeing you in a future webinar. Have a good afternoon. Thank you.